Hello guys, in this video tutorial we will be talking about the fatty acid metabolism. Now the body has a limited supply of glucose relative to the energy stored as fat. There are three sources of fatty acids for energy metabolism in mammals, in not mammals, in all any animals because actually. Dietary triacylglycerol from males. Second one is a triacylglycerol synthesized in the liver during times when internal energy sources are abundant. And third one is a triacylglycerol stored in adipose tissue as lipid droplets. Okay, now we can see the structure of a triacylglycerol and how they it is actually look like. Now if I zoom in here, this is uh, this part is called a triacylglycerol. It is made up with glycerol chain and different fatty acid tails. Now if I just view on to the glycerol, then this is the glycerol part. This is the backbone actually so it is the backbone of our whole structure and third one is the fatty acids so if you if you bring these fatty acids uh, fatty acid and glycerol structures together will make this triacylglycerol dietary di triacylglycerol come from fats in 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 the foods we eat the breakdown of those in 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 ingested triacylglycerol does not occur in stomach but starts once at partially digested food has entered the small intestine now you can find this food is digested in stomach then finally it will uh, produce triacylglycerol only when it reaches in intestine okay now let's look at the fed state uh, scenario when food sources exceed uh, the in, uh, immediate needs of the body. Excess energy is then metabolized and stored as dietary triacylglycerol in fat cells which are called the adipose tissue cells which are destined to store fat, uh, fatty acids. Okay. Food travels into the stomach where it is digested into components including fats. So fat equals to triacylglycerol here in that case. Now, those mo these molecules then travel into the small intestine when bile salts form a gallbladder emulsify the relatively insoluble dietary fats to form micelles. Now, micelles are important because if we if we uh, put fat into the water or or as as the fat is made up with the hydrophobic content, then it it need to form this micelle because uh, without the formation of micelle, it cannot be dissolved. Uh, it cannot be soluble uh, solubilized in the water. Triacylglycerols form micelle uh, with nonpolar cores and uh, surrounded by bile salts during the solvation. The R group of the triacylglycerol are nonpolar, so they point towards the center of the micelle. Now, as we can see here. So the R groups are soluble in water, so point towards the micelle, and these all the parts are filled with the bile salts, and they'll produce this micelle structure uh, coated uh, via the bile salts. Okay, now these are the R groups at the center, and triacylglycerols are placed here. Okay. Now the micelle then continues down the small intestine. Here an enzyme called pancreatic lipase digests the triacylglycerol into fatty acid plus glycerol. Now as you can see here, this is the enzyme, hydrolysis is done, as a result it, it will produce fatty acids and glycerol. Now this is a question, what is the name of the water soluble enzyme that degrades triacylglycerol uh, and uh, produce uh, a fatty acid and glycerol in the small intestine? The answer is pancreatic lipase. Okay, now let us move on to the next step. The triacylglycerols are then packed into the ap uh, apo uh, it's, it, they are processed in proteins. They are called the apoproteins and cholesterol into blood soluble uh, complexes called chylomicrons. Now these chylomicrons move across the blood vessel membrane and into the blood stream. Now you can find this chylomicron there uh, means the triacylglycerol is further coated with proteins. Now uh, the chylomicron travels through the bloodstream and have two possible fates. The blood-borne uh, fat can leave, uh, leave the fat cells and let, let us go here. Now the blood-borne fat uh, can travel to fat cells which are the adipose tissues for storage or to muscle cells for the breakdown and act as a fuel uh, or a source of energy. For storage of fat in adipose, the triacylglycerol is cleaved onto the wall of the blood vessel by lipoprotein lipase into fatty acid and glycerol. These components travel into the adipose cell and are then stored as triacylglycerols in the fat droplets, as we can see in this picture. Of course, if you are uh, e uh, exercising after eating, the dietary fat would in, uh, instead be utilized by the muscle cells, and energy will be produced. So that's why, if if you uh, if you just uh, if you are exercising just after eating, this is not good for your health because sometimes there are less uh, amount of fats that are going to store in the adipose tissues. Okay, 
so it will make you sick now of course uh, now you can see here lipase can break it down and it will produce it okay so then the muscle cell will take them and they will generate ATP and also carbon dioxide via the aerobic respiration process via the process called glycolysis and Krebs cycle up to this point we have discussed the, the dietary fat acid fatty acid metabolism namely how dietary fats get broken down and either stored as fat cells for energy reserves or utilized immediately for energy by respiring uh, respiration of the cells such as those in active muscle cells so the fate of this dietary fat fatty acid after metabolization is two one is that the storage inside the adipose tissue as fat droplets and second thing is that direct utilization via the uh, muscle cells to produce or to generate ATP now let us focus on another scenario such as one brought about during the extens extended exercise period because the muscles will quickly use up all the amount of body stored glycogen energy stored as fat as fat droplets in adipose tissues get uh, mobilized to bring the energy serve to the rapidly respiring uh, my myocytes right so the steps are first epinephrine or glucagon both are the hormones uh, leaves the bloodstream and binds with the receptor molecule uh, found on the cell membrane on the adipocyte that means the fat cell then this allows adenylate cyclase to convert ATP into cyclic AMP now the cyclic AMP bind with the protein kinase and activates it now it activated protein kinase proceeds to bind with triacylglycerol lipase thereby activating it once activated the triacylglycerol lipase is able to break down triacylglycerols into their fatty acids components like fatty acids and glycerols now the fatty acid molecules are picked by the protein serum albumin in the bloodstream now, serum albumins are very important carriers for this fatty acid droplets now the serum albumin travels through the blood vessel and releases the fatty acid molecules in myocytes myocytes mean the muscle cells as they are need okay finally the fatty acid undergo beta oxidation process this process releases carbon dioxide and ATP energy from the myocyte to use and the myocyte cell will use this and will generate ATP via the process of uh, oxidative phosphorylation at the terminal site. Now there is a question again, what is the name of the carrier molecule in the bloodstream that transport fatty acids from the adipocytes to the myocytes for oxidation to ATP? The answer is serum albumin. This is the protein which can carry it. Now let's review the process of metabolism of fatty acid and its molecular level. Now the triacylglycerols in food are not soluble in water, thus bile salts like cholate and glycocholate must, this must soluble or must solvate them to make them more associable to water soluble enzymes such as lipase. Bile salts surround the non-polar uh, non fatty acids and orient themselves hydrophobic and change this, their group uh, groups towards surrounding water molecules dramatically increasing the triacylglycerol solubility. So what they are doing, they are actually covering up all those groups which are non uh, not insoluble in water and thus by making it, it, it is making it soluble. Once solvated, the ester bonds uh, holding the fatty acids to the glycerol skeleton are broken by enzymes called lipases. Uh, lipases break lipids. This occurs in the small intestine. The fatty acids and glycerols are absorbed into the intestinal mucosa. And you can find this uh, really fatty uh, and mu mucus layer in the intestinal mucosal level. In the intestinal mucosa, the fatty acids and glycerols are resynthesized into triacylglycerols. Then they are combined with dietary cholesterol and specialized proteins to form aggregates called the chylomicrons. So remember, whatever fat we are eating, it is broken down into fatty acids and glycerols. Then we make them solubilized to carry them uh, into the intestinal mucosa level. Then intestinal mucosa cells will uptake them. Then they will convert this into again triacylglycerol. So they will bring fatty acids and glycerol together to make triacylglycerol because we need triacylglycerol for the further treatment or further processing then once we produce triacylglycerol then only we can uptake all the specialized proteins like uh, like different types of proteins 
the uh, dietary cholesterols and all these things together to make small droplet of molecules uh, or fatty acid molecules which is covered with this protein structure they are called the chylomicrons now there are different types of protein droplets according to their molecular weight and size we call them sometimes low density lipoprotein we call them high density lipoprotein sometimes we call them very low density lipoprotein sometimes uh, very high density lipoprotein so ldl vdl or v, uh, vldl like this vhdl like this okay now let's move on chylomicrons are transported via the bloodstream to adipocytes or adipose tissue cells or to myocytes for the energy metabolism the fatty acids stored in the adipose can later be used as transported to myocytes by the serum albumin that's it and that's all about how dietary fat metabolism is processed and dietary fat is broken down into fatty acid then fatty acid is further treated and then finally it will be presented to either adipose tissues for storage or muscle cells for production of energy that's it and i hope it will help you thank you